we have total crop failure. In this regard, improving access to climate advice services and building capacity of farmers will enhance their resilience to climate related impacts and effects. Currently in Ghana, we are experiencing er erratic rainfall that has affected onset of the beginning and the end of the rains, thereby affecting decision-making of our farmers. The ICRA project is expected to make significant contribution to the livelihood of the Ghanaian farmer and other value chain actors. Aim at improving access to climate information and services. Access to climate information service will improve adaptation capacity of farmers to the negative impact of climate variabilities and changes. In an effort to contribute to increase food security and improve livelihood of resource poor farmer in Ghana and Sub-Saharan Africa, CG centers and the other national programs and partners of West Africa have been developing climate adapted technologies for the past two decades. However, these technologies are not yet in the hands of our smallholder farmers and the other value chain actors. Therefore, improving crop productivity in Ghana and Sub-Saharan Africa to achieve food security and improve livelihood of populations require an accelerated approach of dissemination and promotion of these technologies to ensure that farmers have access to them. There is also the need to increase farmers' awareness of the economic benefits of using these climate adapted technologies to enhance adoption. The capacity development opportunities, including training of trainers and graduate studies are embedded in the ICRA project and that will facilitate the development and dissemination of environmentally sound technologies and build capacity of sustainable food crop productivity. ICRA project, I'm told, will strengthen the capacity of stakeholders. Here we mean researchers, farmers, extension agents, and service providers to efficiently use the crop production technologies to increase food production and develop policy advice to facilitate an adoption of improved technologies by farmers in Ghana and the sub-region. In scaling up, we need to develop collaborative research and build partnership with major stakeholders. At the local level, to facilitate scaling up technologies, our project has adapted among other approaches, the innovation platform approach and research extension linkage committee, that is direct for dissemination. Through the IPs, all relevant stakeholders along the value chain are brought together to promote technologies. Extension agents are the immediate contact family of, of our farmers. To the REC, their capacity will be strengthened to deliver timely information to farmers. The REC platform provides opportunities to receive feedbacks from farmers through extension agents to researchers and other policy makers. On this note, ECRA project is therefore very useful intervention and it, and it aligns very well with our national priorities. 
So I'll urge all of us to support and contribute to the success of the project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Munchia. Um, please, uh, friends from the media, we will make these speeches available to you uh, after this. I will now call on Dr. Lorenzo Carrera, who is the sector lead for sustainable development from the World Bank. Thank you, Richard. And uh, uh, thank you to IITA for, uh, for the invite. Um, I'm, I'm representing the, the World Bank and its uh, country director, Pierre Laporte. Um, so let me start by saying uh, our concern is uh, the, the rising food security uh, in Africa. Agriculture remains at the center of the livelihood of many people and millions of people in Africa. Uh, but yet, uh, uh, many Africans still remain food insecure and malnourished. In Ghana, approximately 46% of households are engaged in agriculture. Um, this raise up to 76% in rural households and more than 80% in Upper East and Upper West region. So it, it is well known that Northern Ghana is more vulnerable than the South. It is more prone to droughts flooding and food insecurity. Uh, COVID-19 has, uh, has dramatically increased the number of people in food crisis in the continent in 2020 and continuing in 2021. Uh, WFP has estimated that around 2 million people in Ghana are vulnerable uh, to climate shocks uh, in terms of food security. Uh, COVID-19 has highlighted uh, the, the, the importance of agriculture sector as a driver of growth. Uh, but there is an additional threat uh, to food insecurity, which is climate change. The, the livelihood of African farmers are being affected by the impact of climate change already. We see increasing extreme events of uh, droughts, floods, and uh, their associated impacts. Climate projection for Ghana show increasing temperature over the, the, the next decades and high level of uncertainties in terms of uh, rainfall uh, going from uh, plus minus 30%, plus or minus 30%, depending on the models. Um, so this could render land unproductive and reduce the yield of some of the major crops. Uh, cocoa, for example, uh, could experience losses of around 3% in the short term and up to 5 7% by 2050. The World Bank has been scaling up its support for climate smart agriculture to help African countries in boosting their resilience to climate change. Um, Last year, uh, a World Bank analytical uh, funded analytical work have been used to prepare a climate smart agriculture country profile for Ghana to help inform investment decisions and uh, uh, climate smart agriculture investment plan. Uh, the World Bank with the new climate change action plan is stepping up its support uh, in countries on addressing uh, climate change and boosting resilience. So investing in agriculture research and innovation and making it accessible to beneficiaries is critical to build resilience. Transforming agricultural research and innovation can play a catalytic role in building climate resilience and address food insecurity. Um, it is estimated that agricultural research and development can be the largest single factor, more than 50% contributing to total factor productivity. So it's, it is a very important area where to invest. Uh, strengthening the productivity of, of African agriculture is critical, but it will depend on the ability of the governments and their partners to bring science and innovation to the forefront of the development agenda. Uh, and here we go to the ICRA project. Um, the World Bank will support research and capacity building activities carried out by the CGR centers and partner organizations 
with the goal uh, to enhance the access of climate innovation services and technologies and, uh, and creating partnership for the delivery of climate smart innovation in agriculture and validated climate smart agriculture technologies. So the project will focus on bridging the gap between climate knowledge and technologies and uh, the people that use this knowledge and technologies uh, to reduce food insecurity and enhance food systems. So the CGR and ICRA can play a vital catalytic role in strengthening the agricultural research, architecture in Africa, and help filling this missing middle. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Carrera from the World Bank. Now I'll call on our next partner, who is from the International Water Management Institute. He's in the person of Dr. Sanders Swart, a senior researcher, water and climate adaptation. Thank you very much for the introduction. So indeed, my name is Sanders Wart, working for the International Water Management Institute. I'm based here in Accra in our West Africa regional office. The International Water Management Institute, or INMI in short, is an international organization with headquarters in Asia, in Colombo, Sri Lanka, but we have regional offices around uh, Africa and Asia. We work on water resources management uh, at various scales, so that can be from uh, river basins down to the, the agricultural fields of the farmers. Let me give you some examples of how IMI um, is working on climate change adaptation and mitigation uh, globally. So we develop tools, uh, tools and knowledge that help uh, decision makers, farmers to adapt to climate change. That can be at the river basin scale where we have our models uh, such as water accounting. Yeah, that, that's a system where uh, we assess the water resources, the current water resources, the users, and uh, we can assess interventions that can be in the current state, but also in the future state. So we provide the river basin managers or the countries uh, the information to, to better adapt uh, the integrated water resources management plans and include a climate change component. We also develop early warning systems for droughts and floods. We use remote sensing, uh, in, and information services to farmers, uh, to end users, uh, to, to, um, to be informed about upcoming droughts or, or floods and to take pre uh, preparatory measures. We work with farmers, so we have climate smart water solutions that we scale to the farmers. For example, in West Africa, we work in, in Nigeria, Mali, Burkina Faso, and we provide uh, opportunities for farmers, both in the irrigated uh, ecologies as well as in the rain fed ecologies, to adapt to climate change. Uh, these are soil and water conservation measures, but also um, cheap, uh, let's say affordable uh, irrigation technologies. Um, specifically, I would like to mention the, the solar irrigation solutions that we work on. We develop business models with the private sector to make sure that those, uh, those options are, um, which are becoming increasingly uh, affordable to the farmers, but that they can actually uh, purchase them. So we develop business models with the private sector um, to scale these solutions to, to the farmers. Uh, that includes, of course, the, the financing services. Um, another aspect, and I, th I think that also relates to our, uh, our intervention in the ICRA project, um, that we, where we will work on with the partners, uh, the major issue for farmers uh, to be resilient uh, and, and adapted to the climate change is, to is access to water. Um, a major issue that is already reported by, by farmers, uh, whether they are in the uplands, but also in the lowlands, for example. So how can we ensure that farmers have actually access to irrigation technologies? And major questions is, um, for, for farmers is the knowledge. Many of them are not used uh, to, to irrigate, so where to find the knowledge? Uh, where to find the suppliers of the equipment? Where to find the suppliers of the irrigation services who can design their systems for them? Uh, but also to, in, to invest, eh? because although we scale affordable solutions, these are still significant uh, investments for the, for the farmers. So how can we link all these questions in, into one tool that, that help farmers to, uh, to invest in irrigation and to become resilient? What we are proposing in, in the ICRA project is to develop uh, a digital app. 
and in this app we will answer those questions it will provide uh, extension materials it will provide information on uh, on the technologies uh, where to buy them so they are linked to the suppliers um, but also how to uh, operate them and how to maintain them um, so th this is something that we are going to develop together with the partners in uh, in Ghana and we, we expect to scale it out to other countries as well if, the, if this is successful. Um, this is in support of so-called pharma-led irrigation development. Yeah? So we're not focusing on the large-scale schemes. Many people, if you talk about irrigation, they refer to the, the schemes. We are talking about the farmers that have a plot and that are willing to invest into irrigation. And that can be uh, one hectare, two hectare, or three hectares, depending on the area that the farmer has available. This can make a huge difference um, to, to the farmers, uh, but also uh, to their diets. And there's a, there's a lot of diversification. If farmers invest in irrigation, um, they can, can move from one crop during the rainy season to up to three crops per year. So huge impact uh, for the farmers. Um, the project is starting, very much looking forward to, to work with the national partners and the partners in Ghana to develop this app jointly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Swart. Um, so we'll call our next partner and we hope that uh, we would be brief so that because the project, uh, the program is uh, starting very soon. Our next partner is from uh, the Center for Agricultural Biosciences International in the person of Dr. Victor Clotty. Please, Kabi. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here to talk about the project, not necessarily about my organization, which is known in short as CABI. Um, we've met here on this project, which you see on the banner there, accelerating impact of CGIA climate research for Africa which in short is called ICRA. I will be referring to it as ICRA Ghana because our meeting over the next three days is to share knowledge and review what has so far been done while we plan ahead for the project's interventions in Ghana. ICRA Ghana will focus on bridging the gap between the research institutes that produce improved technologies and the development organizations that promote the adoption of improved technologies, including digital advisory services. This is so because we want to contribute to enhancing the resilience of the country's agriculture and food systems. In the phase of climate change while we ultimately be improving livelihoods, livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of farmers. Since we cannot cover all the commodities in the country over the three years duration of this project, the focus will be on maize, cowpea, yam, sweet potatoes, and tomato technologies. Our engagement with stakeholders will be in eight of the country's administrative regions, namely Bono East, Central, Northern, Northeast, Oti, Savannah, Upper East and Upper West. This engagement that's in the regions and around the commodities mentioned is for the existing expertise to mutually work to strengthen the technical, institutional, and human capacity needed in the coming years to move developed climate smart agricultural technologies and practices off the shelves into practice and to achieve impact on agricultural production and environmental sustainability 
in the country. The One Health approach will be used during the implementation. This will make sure that agricultural technological packages constantly address the complex public health issue of improved human and ecosystem health through better food safety, nutrition, pest management, and the use of land and water. Therefore, design and deployment of all our agricultural technologies and practices will have to take into cognizance the interconnection between people, animals, plants, and their shared environment, thus promoting sound plant livestock, sound soil and water health. It is envisaged that the knowledge, technologies, and decision-making tools promoted under ICRA Ghana will be of value not only to the productive agents like farmers, including youth and women, local biopesticide producers, and agro input dealers, but also to the public, private, and social, civil society organizations that play critical roles in developing improved technologies. To conclude, under ICRA Ghana, what we seek to do is to accelerate the uptake of climate smart agricultural practices that respond to gender and one health demands. This will be done by making the national framework for climate services and innovative platforms that include the private sector and farmers acquire the capacity to identify, promote, and implement suitable best bet climate informed services and climate smart agricultural packages. There will also be a special drive to create awareness through the media and mass campaigns on the best bet climate informed services and the climate smart agricultural packages. Through that, there will be co-generation of business models that engages ch champion women and youth led enterprises. Training will be provided to farmers for successful implementation of One Health and climate smart agricultural technologies at the selected pilot sites. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Cloti. Now, please, I would ask that um, our speakers move to the days. Uh, Professor Muntia, Dr. Carrera, Dr. Swart, Dr. Cloti. Yes. We have a couple of uh, speeches more, and then uh, we would read the press release. Now I would call on Dr. Daniel Asari, who is the country director for ISOCO, please. Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dan Asari Chena, I represent ISOCO. So, I'm sure most of you here must have known it so called, must have heard about the work that you do. Essentially, we use mobile technologies to drive agriculture advisory services to smaller farmers. And so uh, farmers across the country are being receiving uh, market price information, for instance, agronomic advisory information, tropical weather forecast, any other agricultural related content that are meant for them to increase their productivity and make them much more profitable and also more resilient in the face of climate change. So under this project, SOCO is pleased to be part of this program because our main aim is that whatever is going to be produced by all the parties who have spoken before me, so KB just spoke, CSR is here, PPRZ, every partner who is part of this project is generating content meant to support smaller farmers to increase their productivity. But then the question is, how do this content get to the smaller farmer at the village level? And so what we do at the SOCO is to ensure that this information is packaged in a such a way that farmers can actually assess them on their simple mobile devices. They don't necessarily need to have smartphones, any feature from what in Ghana you call a YAM phone is what farmers can actually use to access the information. So all these formulas that have been generated, we are digitizing them onto our platform and putting them in a format that the farmer can actually read or listen to their mobile phone. So you're gonna provide information services via 
IVR via voice messaging. And the voice message is very, very interesting. So the way it works is that when the farmer phone rings and he answers the call, he starts hearing the information in their own local languages. So currently you cover about 15 local languages in Ghana. You cover almost all the important local languages that are spoken in the country. And farmers who are going to be part of this program will have this opportunity to have access to this highly accurate, actionable, crummy, smart content delivered to them via number of phones. In addition, they're going to be able to call a call center and ask for further clarification that they want to know about the program. But what's also interesting is that normally for projects like this, by the time the project ends, you see that the services and everything has been done over the last three or four years also ceased to run. It's of course role in this program is to ensure that the program continues beyond the life of the project phase. And so you're gonna put in place measures to ensure that farmers are gonna be continuously receiving the information that is going to be generated and developed and packaged for the use of the smaller farmers. So this is what you're gonna do for this program, really connecting the program to the last mile user and making sure that they can understand the content they can engage our, our expert and then ask further questions about the program. So I wouldn't take so much of our time. Later on, if anybody's interested in knowing more about what you're gonna do under this program, we're very happy to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sai. And yes, the press would have the time to also uh, ask questions. Now, I was going to turn our attention to a virtual uh, speech, but before I do that, uh, we would ask the Pro Vice Chancellor of UDS, Professor Phyllis Abagadi, to also make a few uh, statements. Thank you so much. Um... Good morning to everybody. I thought I was here as the director of uh, the West African Center for Water Irrigation and Sustainable Agri, but not uh, as the Pro Vice Chancellor. But uh, in any case, I double as the Pro Vice Chancellor of the university. So I'd like to say a few words on the, the West Africa Center for Water Irrigation and Sustainable Agriculture in the University for Development Studies, which I happen to be the director to. It was established in uh, 2019 with support from the World Bank and then the government of Ghana as a center of excellence, focusing on conducting research and building capacity in the area of climate, water resource management, irrigation, and sustainable agriculture. The main aim is to look at contributing to food security under the changing climate situation in the country and the West Africa region largely. We're building capacity and conducting research at the masters, the PhD level, and also short courses for industry players. And I must say that our model of training at a higher level makes it compulsory for all students at the master's and PhD level to engage in internship program, which would let them learn from industry what is currently happening there. So it is very heartwarming to see partners here doing one thing or the other. And we would be working with partners under this project to see that students from our place also gain practical knowledge in whatever they are doing. Our master's and PhD programs are in the area of irrigation and drainage engineering, climate change, environmental management and sustainability, sustainable agriculture and food systems, and then soil and water conservation and management. We currently have students from about 12 different countries, including Francophone students, studying at the various levels. And we would be having over 100 students from these countries 
by the next month with our new admissions that will be coming. For this pro project, our contribution mainly will be in the area of capacity building and the conduct of research. And we also think that co-creation of knowledge and looking at the case of business, innovation and entrepreneurship, which we think that would transfer knowledge and also create knowledge and convert it into business ideas workable so that science will no more be the science that we had before would be made useful to industry and to society in general. So I wish to indicate that as partners of this project, we would like to work with all the other partners in making sure that we come out successful with all the aims that have been espoused in this project. So our support for the ICRA project is very loud and we are ready to partner in this and more. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now we would go virtual and I would now ask the West Africa Hub Director of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, Professor Michael Abbotton, to deliver his speech. Okay, thank you. I hope you can hear me okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Richard. And thank you all for, for coming today. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person. I am here in uh, Ibadan, Nigeria, which is the headquarters for the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA. Of course, we work across Sub-Saharan Africa, um, many countries with, with, with four hubs in the West, in the East, um, in the South and in the Central Africa, and a new hub actually also in the Sahel. So much of our work um, is focused on climate change. Our overall mission is, is to reduce food insecurity, to alleviate poverty and to build sustainable livelihoods. And to do that with, without really exacerbating the damage to the environment which is currently occurring. So climate change adaptation is an important part of that. As you've heard, what this project is about is really, is really taking some of the things which have already been developed, making them more impactful, accelerating, as the name says, that impact. Yeah, so some of those impacts which have been created in the CG, with IITA, with other centers and with partners, include, for example, uh, varieties which are drought tolerant, heat tolerant, maize, cowpea, cassava, yam. Those are, those are crops that we uh, work on in, in IITA, along with banana and uh, plantain and cassava. So that's one element. But what I want to emphasize today is that climate change and resilience to climate change is not just about drought and heat and those other factors, floods and so forth, variable rainfall. It's also about the ways in which pests and diseases will change their uh, patterns of distribution, will change their frequencies, will change their severity. And we're already seeing some very good examples of that in Africa. We are seeing pests and diseases move around and cause many problems where they have not caused problems before. Now, climate change is not the only reason for that, but it's an important one. And we're seeing some good examples. So, so part of this project with ACRA is really to implement uh, a lot of the work which has been done in IHA in West Africa, um, predominantly in our uh, station in, in Cotonou in Benin, but bringing that across very much to implement it within Ghana. We have a station in Tamale in Ghana. We have offices in, in um, Accra. We're very much interested in sustainable intensification of production. So part of that is to deal with new pest and disease outbreaks. Part of that, again, is to do with the surveillance of those pests and diseases. And again, to really 
to also use methods of control. And in particular, we have a lot of experience and success with the use of integrated pest management. So that's going to be part of that. That's biological control of pests and diseases. That's going to be part of this project. And it's very important to appreciate that, you know, it's not just about those drought and so on. It's also about the ways in which pests and diseases will move around. So we are building in this project on tools which have been developed. We're building on knowledge which has been developed to allow us to really implement those tools or services with the smallholder farmers in, in Ghana. And part of that is building on what we've achieved within Cotonou. As I said, we have the Biorisk Management Facility, BMAF. I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that as this um, launch goes on. So that's an important facility which brings together these ideas of climate change, of resilience, of pest and disease um, impacts. And that's a big part of what is going to be really developed in this. It has developed this One Health platform, which looks at climate and looks at the impacts on people, on animals, on plants, the whole ecosystem, and brings it together. An important part of that, of course, is protecting crops. So this is about a public-private partnership. It's about strengthening capacity, as you've heard, it's about bringing together tools and technologies and really putting them into practice um, for the small laws of farmers within Ghana. So once again, thank you very much for your uh, participation, your attention this morning. And um, I'm sure that the rest of the workshop will also go well. So Richard, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. So. Yes, thank you very much. A round of applause. Now, I will read our statement to the press, and then we'll take a few questions. And then we would close this session for the launch to begin. So the accelerated impact of CGIAR Climate Research for Africa, Ghana Cluster, ICRA, is being launched here at the Alisa Hotel today, but it will continue till 16th September 2021. The project is funded by the World Bank and it supports the CGIAR climate change, agriculture, and food security seekers programs and activities that are targeted specifically to Africa. It aims to help taking to scale the most strategic and impactful CCAFs Africa programs, promoting resilience to climate change and improved food security in the six targeted World Bank International Development Association eligible countries in Africa, which includes Ghana. The ICRA Ghana project led by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, IITA, will focus on bridging the gap between research institutes that produce improved technologies and the development organizations that promote the adoption of improved technologies, including digital climate advisories for the purpose of enhancing the resilience of the country's agriculture and food systems in the face of climate change while improving livelihoods of hundreds of thousands of farmers. The project will also specifically launch a One Health platform for climate-driven pests and diseases and will share expertise to strengthen the technical, institutional, and human capacity needed to move CGIAR innovations off the shelf and achieve impacts in the country. One Health is an integrated, collaborative, multi-sectorial, and interdisciplinary systems thinking approach, working at the local, international, regional, and global levels with the goal of achieving optimal health outcomes, recognizing the interconnection between people, animals, plants, and their shared environment. ICRA 
will promote an advanced climate informed one, one health innovation platform that builds on CGIAR's track records in this area, framing the nexus of crop, livestock, soil and water health for improved human and ecosystem health, food safety and nutrition, and climate change as a complex public health issue. As part of the objectives, ICRA will strengthen the capacity of participating CCAF's partners and stakeholders, enhance access to climate information services and validated climate smart agricultural technologies while filling a critical gap by making cut, cutting edge CGIAR research and innovation available to national agricultural research systems and other key stakeholders in Africa. It will support knowledge creation and capacity building activities to enable regional and national level stakeholders to take climate agriculture, climate smart agriculture innovations to scale. Structured around the main components, including knowledge generation and sharing for effective climate informed services, strengthening public private partnership for delivery and supporting uptake of climate smart agriculture innovation through piloting. The project will provide gender and one health smartness assessment of climate smart agriculture options for accelerated uptake of innovations, among other activities. The project is anchored to CGIAR's multi-stakeholder platform of the Bio-Risk Management Facility, BMAF, hosted by IITA station in Benin, West Africa, and includes the following partners. CGIAR, CGIAR research program on climate, ag climate, agriculture, and food security, CCAPS, International Water Management Institute, IUMI, Alliance Biodiversity, SEAT, World Agroforestry, C4 ECRAF, ECRISAT, Center for Agriculture, sorry, ECRISAT, Center for Agriculture Biosciences International, CABI, Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy Research, NIBIO, Crop Research Institute, CSIR, CSIR Crop Research, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, MUFA, PPRSD, Ghana Meteorological Agency, and Climate Change and Agriculture Department of the University of Development Studies, CCAD UDS. The three-day event aims at forging relevant partnerships and articulating shared visions, outcomes, output for successful implementation of ICRA in Ghana. It will achieve this by fostering partnerships between CGIAR and local research institutes, universities, civil society organizations, farmer organizations, and private firms. ICRA will be facilitating the development of climate informed services, CIS, and promoting the adoption of CSA adopt solutions across sub-regions within Africa that are extremely vulnerable to climate change. The project would, will also support on the ground activities in selected countries where CGIAR science has the greatest chance of successes in delivering catalytic results which can be adopted by other countries in the region. Thank you very much. Now, we'll take a few questions and then break for the actual launch to happen. So friends from the media, are there any questions you would like to be answered now or maybe later? Yes. My name is Lydia Kukwa Samwa. I write for the Ghana News Agency. My first question is that uh, we've heard so much this morning, but we don't know when the project is starting. When is it starting? And then I also want to know how we are going to mobilize the farmers to assess this information. We've mentioned 
um, some regions that we are focusing on. How are we going to mobilize all these farmers so that they get the uh, right information to farm? And then I also want to know, I've heard that it's three, a three-year project. Do we have any plan for sustainability after the three-year period? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Tepa, you are on the line. Can you hear me? Yes, Richard, can you hear me? Yes. In order to make this very interesting, I would like you to take these questions. When okay. is the project starting and then how do we mobilize the farmers? And the third one, sustainability of the project. Can um, you thank you? Thank you very much for the question. Um, uh, this is actually uh, a little launch of the project. We have started initial uh, consultations with the stakeholders on the ground uh, to really consolidate our plans. And uh, most importantly, uh, what we, we did is uh, to make sure we are uh, speaking the same language and uh, uh, put mechanisms in place to enhance synergies and uh, collaboration between the different partners involved in Acre Ghana. Uh, you have heard that partnerships is uh, really critical for this project. So uh, we want to connect with farmer organizations uh, through the, the, the narrowest mechanisms and uh, ensure that uh, whatever technologies uh, we are promoting uh, are really meeting the true needs of farmers. So uh, the farmers will really occupy a central uh, position of this project. And uh, in terms of sustainability, uh, we are working to foster uh, public-private partnerships and that's why uh, we have, for instance, a circle on board to make sure that whatever we develop within uh, this project uh, can serve future generations. Thank you so much. I hope this responds to the question. Um, we, we have already done the partnership. And all those who actually gave speeches here are our partners. So Isoko, Kabi, CRI, IITA, the World Bank, we are all partners in this. So Isoko would like to make a statement on this. Yeah, I just want to contribute uh, to help answer the question. So essentially, the program has started early in the year. And so what Gerson said is that this is a late lunch. So even though it started back in January, we're already now bringing it to the public domain. So the program is already running. Uh, regarding sustainability, so that's why we have local partners involved in the program. And so we have ISOCO, we have CSR Crop Research, we have PPR, we have GMET. Essentially, the program is setting up what they call demonstration for some selected communities across the area that was mentioned. And so some farmers in the, the Chiman area, some in the northern region, some in the Volta region. All these areas are going to have some demonstration for setup where these technologies are going to be demonstrated practically for farmers to see. And then on top of that, you're also going to be able to engage the farmers via the guitar platform. So I'll talk about the, all the farmers that are going to be receiving voice messaging, SMS, IVR course, and so they can actually engage with the program. Once the funding runs out, the local part, especially SOCO and GMET and the rest, are going to take part, take up whatever the program has done to make sure the farmers continue to stay, stay engaged on the program. I hope this helps to answer your question. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Ishmani J. Brown. I'm a director from the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development. Uh, from all the presentations that have been made, um, I haven't seen anything on marine and the aquaculture industry. But I just want to find out whether your program has any plans of uh, integrating the aquaculture and marine fisheries into it. Thank you. Tepa, would you take this or I should let Sandra? 
who is from UMI. Yes, thank, thank you very much for that question. Um, I have to give a negative answer on, on, on whether we are uh, going to work on, on aquaculture within this program, at least from the side of IMI. I, I don't want to talk for, for other partners, but I haven't heard talking about uh, integrating aquaculture. Uh, please, anyone who's participating, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I do want to say that IMI is working uh, very much on the integration of aquaculture, irrigation systems, uh, rice production, sustainable production systems that integrate aquaculture as well. We do that in Asia and we are slowly moving that to, to Africa as well. Um, so if you want to discuss further on that, then, then I'm available. Thank you, Sanders. Any other questions? Otherwise, I would move that uh, we close this session and then initiate the launch and then uh, we can have one-on-one -on -one discussions or questions and answers time with the uh, experts who spoke here uh, as the day goes on. So thank you very much for coming for the press conference. And please, you may have your seat. At this point, I would hand over the mic to one beautiful lady who is just going to walk majestically to the podium and take over from me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have permission from Dr. Asari to do without my mask, at least for this brief moment. So do pardon me. It's been an insightful press conference and I'm sure my colleagues in the media will carry the story, a story of climate change and agriculture. I am sure, as many would agree with me, affect the very sustenance of us, especially in West Africa. So we'll do well to carry this story to the voices that matter. So at the end of the day, we all have a beautiful planet to live on. My name is Millicent Atuguba, and I run a media and PR consultancy I've been tasked to moderate this second session, leading to the technical segments that will follow this afternoon. As stated, the launch today would forge relevant partnerships and would have a shared vision for a successful implementation of ICRA in Ghana. So I believe this is good news for us uh, for us as Ghanaians, we know what it means to us very much. Anytime I have to do something on climate change, there's a little story that hits my mind. When I was growing up as a little child, my dad, who was an educationist, would listen to every news on Ghana television then. And I would usually listen to the news with him. But both of us had different objectives for listening to the news. My objective was to become a newscaster, which I later did on Ghana television. But my dad was just interested in the news. And if you remember in those days, after the local news would have the international news and then the weather. There was something intriguing. I noticed my father would dash to the washroom or take his bath just when the weatherman appeared for the weather report. I became curious. And when I found out someday, he said to me, my daughter, these people don't make me understand anything. 
they go like, the southern hemisphere will be moving towards here. And this is going to form some raindrops and we can expect some showers by midday. So it's a good time for me to take a shower. But more so, <laughs> but more so he'll say to me, one day when you have an opportunity to interact with scientists and researchers, just be careful you maintain the scripts given to you because they have spent a lifetime probably coining an acronym and they have spent years researching to come up with a solution to just a single word or sentence. So be careful not to change what someone spent a lifetime researching. So this morning, I intend to go strictly what has been given me by the IITA and I'm sure would we'll have an interesting session. At a gathering like this, there's usually someone special who would lead us through, someone who's got what it takes to direct the course of events. I'm talking about a special guest of honor. So if you will, I'll go ahead and introduce that special guest for this session. And that special guest holds a BC in natural resource management, an MPhil in forest management from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and a PhD in ecology from the University of Ibadan, the United Kingdom. He also holds an LLB and BL degrees from the Ghana School of Law, a renowned chairman, is the Director General and Chief Research Scientist at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR. He is also a professor at the College of Science and Technology. And in addition, he's a solicitor and a barrister at the Supreme Court of Ghana. Professor is a recipient of the prestigious 2019 Korean Global Agricultural Technology Cooperation Award. He is also the recipient of the Rockefeller Foundation Fellowship Grant that actually gives lectures at the Tufts University in Boston, the United States of America. He has obtained a Sigma in Research Grants, which is a prestigious award from the United States of America. Professor has consulted for the African Development Bank, the Food and Agriculture Organization, the GTZ, the World Bank, and other international non-governmental organizations. In addition, he has served as a member of the seven different experts under the auspices of the United Nations on forests. Tropical Timber Organizations is also one of the commissions that the professor has served on, and this is based in Yokohama, Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the singular honor to introduce to you our special guest for this section, Professor Victor Ajiman. Can we give him a round of applause? Thank you very much, Prof. If you could assume the high table. We are honored to have you this morning. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you, Prof, once again for honoring this invitation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to introduce more dignitaries to occupy the high table. And I have the honor to introduce to you Dr. Richard Asari, Country Web, IITA Ghana, 
Thank you so much, Doc. Please, a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Our next special guest to occupy the high table, Dr. Branford Mochea, and I'm hoping I got that right. Director General, Crops Research Institute. Doc, sorry if I murdered your name. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the correction. Director, Crop Research Institute. Thank you, Dr. Brantford. May I have the honor to bring to the high table Dr. Lorenzo Carrara, Disaster Risk Management Specialist. Thank you, a round of applause for him. Thank you, Doc. And Dr. Carrara is in charge of Disaster Risk Management and Sector Leader Sustainable Development at the World Bank. We are honored to have you, Doc. Next will be Dr. Sander Swartz. He's Senior Research Water and Climate Adaptation, IWIMI. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you, a round of applause, please. Last but not least, may I invite Professor Felix Kofi Abagale, Pro-Vice Chancellor, University of Development Studies. Thank you, Dr. Professor Abagale, I must say. Thank you for honoring this. And if our high table is set, Ladies and gentlemen, shall we give it up for them, please? They deserve it. Thank you. As intended for my short story, we are going verbatim from the program here. And I have the honor to call upstage for the welcome address, Dr. Richard Osari, who is of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. Rep in Ghana, Dr. Richard Asari. Thank you. Let's give it up for him, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm here again. Your Eminence, Professor Victor Ajiman. Yes. He is my mentor, you know, so I always look for the adjectives to really qualify his name. Director General, CSIR. Professor Michael Aberton, the West Africa Hub Director, IITA. Dr. Carrera, the representative of the Director of the World Bank in Ghana invited guest, Nana, friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I bring to you the warm greetings from the Director General of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture and the Regional Director of the one CGIR in West and Central Africa, Dr. Intriana Saginga. IITA, a member of the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research, CGIAR, is a non-for-profit institution that generates agricultural innovations to meet Africa's most pressing challenges of hunger, malnutrition, poverty, and natural resource degradation. Working with various partners across Sub-Saharan Africa to improve livelihoods, enhance food and nutrition security, increase employment, and preserve natural resource integrity. The Consultative Group on International, Agri uh, International Agricultural Research, CGIAR, 
headquartered in Montpellier, is a global partnership that unites 15 international organizations engaged in research about food security. CGIAR research aims to reduce rural poverty, increase food security, improve human health and nutrition, and sustainable management of natural resources. CGIAR research programs, the CRPs, are designed to address today's most pressing agricultural research for development challenges such as climate change, agriculture and food security, and rural poverty at a global level. The CRPs align research of the 15 CGIAR research centers and their partners into efficient multidisciplinary programs to tackle complex development issues. The second aspect of the CRP portfolio builds on the original CRPs to maintain momentum in selected areas and puts more emphasis on integrated agri-food systems, agri-food systems-based approaches, nutrition and health, climate change, soils, reducing waste in food systems, food safety, global stewardship of genetic resources, and big data ICT. Climate change, agriculture, and food security, CCAFs. Climate change, agriculture, and food security programs is one of the cross-cutting global integrating programs within the CGIAR portfolio, which seeks to address challenges of climate change and food security by mobilizing CGIAR and partner science and expertise to achieve positive change with respect to climate smart agriculture, food systems and landscapes. Research activities are carried out through four flagship programs and two cross-cutting learning platforms. Policy and priorities for climate smart agriculture form the first flagship program. Climate smart technologies and practices, the second, low emission development, third, climate services and safety nets, fourth, gender and social inclusion, fifth, and last but not the least, scaling climate smart agriculture. Here in Ghana, IIT has worked closely with its CGIAR partners and the National Agricultural Research Extension System to develop technologies for agricultural landscapes for crops, including cocoa, Copy, plantain, cassava, etc. Threats to food, nutrition, and water security posed by climate change and other challenges are not new, but are becoming increasingly complex and pressing. And this requires new approaches from all partners. The COVID 19 pandemic further highlights the need for a food system response. However, fragmentation of the research agenda has limited the potential of science to help achieve global goals of ending poverty and hunger by 2030. Now to quote a message from the CGIAR System Council, and I quote, as the climate crisis escalates, there's an urgency to maximize our collective impact. Working together, we still have a chance to avert the biggest losses make a real difference in, point, in, in joint efforts to achieve sustainable development goals and transform the lives of vulnerable farmers and consumers." Unquote. The CGIAR is transiting into one CGIAR. One CGIAR is a dynamic reformulation of CGIAR's partnerships, knowledge, asset, and global presence for a new era of interconnected and partnership-driven research towards achieving the sustainable development goals. This will provide our beneficiaries around the world with more sustainable ways to grow, catch, transport, process, and consume safe and nutritious food. One of the thing, benefits of the great thinking of the one CGIR is the World Bank-funded project entitled Accelerating Impact of CGIAR Climate Research for Africa, ICRA. This new project support, would support the CGIAR climate change, agriculture, and food security programs and activities that are targeted specifically to Africa and aims to help taking to scale the most strategic and impactful 
CCAR's Africa programs and promoting resilience to climate change and improve food security in target countries. Ladies and gentlemen, Nana, I will not delve into ICRA for now, as it is the main reason why we are gathered here today. And so, as the day goes on, colleagues will provide details on the essence of this project and what it adds to the science and development of the one CGIR and its partners. On that note, and on behalf of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, who is the, is the host of this project and its partners, I welcome all of you to today's event and wish you successful deliberations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Richard Asari of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an important personality in our midst this morning. A traditional ruler would like to introduce to you, Nana Ekumfi Ameyao is the Ekumfi, I'll take this again. Nana Ikunfi Amiao is the Efuman Ankobia of the Techiman North District. And I hope I got it right. Thank you so much, Nana. If you could assume the front row for us, we'd be grateful. Thank you. Please, a round of applause for Nana. And if we could keep clapping until he takes his seat, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nana Ekumfi Amiao. He is the Ufuman Ankobia of the Tichiman North District. Nana, we are grateful to have you this morning. Before we take our next presentation all the way from Benin, that's going to be streamed live. May I have the honor to introduce some more dignitaries in our midst? We are grateful to have Madam Efua Amponsa Ayamfo, Director Research, Statistics and Information Management of the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. Thank you so much, Madam. Could you give us a wave? Thank you for coming. We acknowledge your presence greatly. We also have in our midst this morning, Mr. Ishmael J. Brown. He is Director of Research Statistics and Information Management at the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquatic Development. Mr. Ishmael, could you give us a wave if you're here? Okay, I think he stepped out. All right. Then Mr. Fred Ansaki Siedu is a representative from the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. We truly acknowledge your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, on our agenda, we will take a goodwill message. This is going to be remote. And it's going to be a presentation by Mr. Michael Abberton of the IITA West African Hub. And he's the director here. So if we are ready, we can watch a live feed then. Okay, <coughs> sorry. Thank you very much. I hope you can You're hear right. me okay. <coughs> can you hear me okay? We can hear you. All right, thank you very much. So yes, greetings from um, IITA in Ibadan, Nigeria, which is the headquarters for the whole of IITA and also for the headquarters for West Africa. I'm very happy to be able to talk to you. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person uh, for various reasons, which some of you will be well aware of. It's not so easy in terms of traveling these days, but um, it's really good to be here. 
I want to welcome you all. I want to thank everybody who has been involved in putting this event together. I want to thank everybody who has been involved in putting the whole project together and, um, and thank you all. Um, in terms of IITA West Africa, this is a very important project. It addresses one of our key priorities in terms of climate change. It builds on previous work which has been done in, in Ghana and in Benin and in other countries. It builds on work which has been done in our station in Tamale, in, in the north of Ghana. And it builds on work which has been done in Cotonou, in Benin in particular. It's aimed at really, as the name goes, accelerating the impact of a lot of work which has been already done. And to do that, we will, of course, be working with a whole range of partners in terms of public and private sector. It's important, again, to recognize climate change has many impacts. Some of those we know more about, including drought and heat, flooding and so forth. Some of them are less reported, including the movement of pests and diseases to new places where they have sometimes very severe impacts. So we really need to be focused not only on those stresses like drought and so on, but also on pests and diseases, on the surveillance of those, on the control of those. And that very much brings in, for example, the work which IIT has done in this area on integrated pest management, on biological control, on uh, the BMAF platform, which we'll hear more about, the Bio-Risk Management Facility, as well as the work we have done throughout Sub-Saharan Africa on overcoming the stresses imposed by climate change through breeding, through agronomy, through better knowledge of markets and value chain development, etc. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, it's really good to see this project being launched. We are, of course, very grateful for the, the World Bank for their support. Um, we know, as I said, it builds on a lot of what has previously been done within the CGIAR and its partners, and it takes that forward to a new level uh, for the benefit of the smallholder farmers in Ghana and throughout, throughout West Africa. So thank you very much, and I'm sure the, the workshop, the launch, is going to be very successful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Michael Abbotson. Next is another remote presentation, this time by Professor Robert Zugmo, leader, CCAFS. If you're ready, Professor Robert Zugmo. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope you can see my, my screen. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Thanks. So my task is to take you within the next 10 minutes um, around the past activities of CCAFs in Ghana. Uh, as you've, you've heard from previous uh, speakers, um, the Acre Ghana project is mainly taking uh, stock on some of the long-standing achievement and lessons learned from the CGIAP research program on climate change, agriculture, and food security, CCAFs. And therefore, I will try to just give you some few examples of achievement. Um, the CCAF program uh, is really trying to tackle the aspect of adaptation and mitigation, but of course, uh, how all this will impact food security. And uh, we also cover the whole food system. And of course, we, we look carefully on the synergies and trade-offs between all these three components of climate smart agriculture. So this brings us to deal with climate variability, climate change, uh, but also 
to incremental adaptation solution uh, in the short term, but also to transformational adaptation option in the long run. So in West Africa, uh, and I'm covering the West Africa component of CCAF and ECRA as well, uh, we try to cover all the different scale, going from the village level to the district, to the national, to the sub-regional. And you can see on the right side, some of the key partners we're working with uh, uh, around the, across these different scales. So uh, in terms of activities in Ghana, uh, these are the key areas I can say we have been focusing during the last 10 years. Uh, first is the participatory action research to evidence and scale up climate smart agriculture options through the climate, climate smart village approach. The second one is how to really de-risk agricultural production through using weather and climate information services. The third one is how to make sure that science and policy are interfacing in a way to advocate for science informed policies and budgetary support. And of course, we don't forget all these cross-cutting topics like gender and youth inclusion, and of course, continuous uh, monitoring and evaluation and capacity building. So the, for the Climate Smart Village uh, approach, uh, let me just say that the aim is here to, to learn from how to work in a participatory manner with different stakeholders from the community level, but in, 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 in coordination with the national stakeholders, such as the NAFs, uh, extensionists, uh, met agencies, private sector entities, in a way that we can come up with evidence-based CSA, climate smart agriculture options that communities can take to scale. So, with this approach, we are able to develop weather smart, water smart, seed smart, carbon nutrient smart, institutional market smart options that can be considered for scaling across Ghana. So I don't want to go into details, but this gives you an example of the kind of scientific data that we have been able to generate in the two climate smart villages in Ghana, namely, the Laura Jirapa uh, uh, site. Uh, and, 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 and so you see a number of uh, data dealing with productivity adaptation, but also on mitigation. So these are the kind of information that, uh, that is required if you want to design uh, project policies and plan that are evidence uh, from the ground. And you can see here, for instance, uh, a list of uh, uh, options of climate smart agriculture technologies that have been tested in these climate smart villages. And we have also some studies on the adoption rate of these uh, climate smart agriculture options, which give an idea of what can really be interesting uh, for consideration depending on uh, the context, the geographical context. We didn't forget the aspect of livestock. So we've worked to develop also climate smart livestock value chains, focusing on multi-species for fodder bank development. And here again, we've identified the top shrub or tree fodder species in, in Northern Ghana. And we've been able to select the top five species that we can really consider for uh, developing these fodder bank. And this will be interesting, for instance, for goat production, which in Northern Ghana is seen as really women sensitive livestock product. So women empowerment uh, is covered. The second aspect, as I mentioned, is for instance, investment cases to promote the use of climate information services for risk management and decision-making for farm um, uh, management. And here is just an example of our work with ESOCO through which we were able to develop and design a public-private partnership business model in order to really bring 
climate information that is generated through GhanaMet, through other sources of climate data, and to design agro-advisories that Isoko will then use uh, the channels of mobile phones to really disseminate this information in a real-time fashion to benefit farmers. So I won't go into the detail, but just note that we started this pilot in 2018, and we, with Esoko, we subsidized 20,000 farmers to benefit from these services. But the next year, in 2019, already 300,000 farmers subscribed to this product. And uh, I understood from Esoko that even today we can talk about 500,000 farmers already benefiting from weather and climate information services through this channel. So this is a big outcome that Acre Ghana will just uh, use as a springboard to really move on with the new uh, areas of intervention of Acre Ghana. Uh, as you can see, we, we believe that through the empirical evidence uh, that, for instance, we generated with uh, ESOCO, ECRA will really, really benefit from, from uh, the lessons learned from CCAF uh, from the last 10 years to really move faster. I heard someone asking how we will reach farmers. I, I think uh, ESOCO is already reaching farmers. It's just now making sure that the new portfolio of options and information is really focused on what ACRA as a project is trying to, to cover. And I will fin finish with another example through which we have worked with uh, 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 for the science policy interfacing to make sure that the scientific knowledge that is generated from the CDIR can be used by national policy decision makers. And here we've tested what we call this national science policy platform. And uh, as you can see this example, it's a compilation of, it's a multi-stakeholder platform and uh, covering different uh, actors and they work together in order to really make sure that they use the up-to-date scientific knowledge to inform different uh, national level uh, activities dealing with climate change. I've listed on the right-hand side uh, some of the achievement of this platform, but I can just mention, for instance, the, the development of, of the Ghana National Climate Smart Agriculture and Food Security Action Plan uh, by the platform, which has allowed to operationalize the Ghana climate change policy that has been def defined by the president. So nowadays we even have now some district level platform to make a kind of a linkage between the national and the district level. And if you consider the climate smart village at the community level, then you have covered uh, the community level, the district level and the national level so that these different scales are talking each other, not only on the top down uh, approach, but also on the bottom up uh, perspective of things. I cannot finish without thinking uh, our partners, CSA, uh, MOFA, ESOCO, of course, Ghana Met, uh, and many others, because we have been able through these different pilots to come up with this frame I'm showing. And we understood that if we want to achieve outcome, there are three major components. We have to provide the scientific evidence, as you can see. We have to engage the key partners that will play the role of champions, and we have to capacitate them and communicate these knowledge in a way that it can go down to the end users, the farmers. And uh, I will just stop here and thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to show some of these uh, lessons learned from the CCAF uh, uh, program. Thank you. Thank you very much for that elaborate presentation. Robert Zugma, lead CCAPS. We're most grateful to have you in our midst. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, 
some more acknowledgements before we take our next live presentation. I have the honor to bring to you Professor Justine Peter, who is Executive Director of WAVE Project West Africa, Virus and Epidemiology. Professor Justine Peter, can you give us a wave? Thank you so much. A round of applause, please. Thank you for joining us. It's an honor to introduce to you Dr. Manuel Tamo, who is Country Director, IITA Benin. Dr. Tamo, give us a wave, please. Thank you so much. We do appreciate your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Benin, we'll be taking another interesting presentation. This time from Gislin Tepayoto. He is project lead, Aikra. Live from Benin, if you're ready, Gislin. Thank you very much. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Great. Um, I was contemplating to be part of this uh, important launch, but due to health challenges, I couldn't travel to Accra. I would like to send my apologies to all the dignitaries on the high table, all distinguished participants and colleagues. Uh, I'm very sorry not being in person with you at the Liza Hotel. Um, I'm standing on, on existing protocol and on all the background information provided uh, for the ICRA projects. And as uh, we continue to build the resilience of farming communities uh, in Ghana and in, in West Africa, I think the ICRA Ghana cluster project comes timely to really uh, support the promotion and uptake of the most uh, strategic and uh, uh, best bet climate smart agriculture technologies. Um, through ICRA, we are working to get institutions stronger. Uh, capacitation, like you heard, is very critical and uh, uh, we are working hand in hand with partners to co-create business models, uh, to come up with uh, sustainable finance mechanisms to be able at the end of the day to ensure that the climate smart agriculture technologies developed by CGRs and partners are really serving the needs of farming communities. Uh, the project is structured around three main components. The first being knowledge generation and sharing for effective services. And I, I will come back to that. And the second component is about partnerships for delivery. This is very important. And then the third is about supporting the scaling out of climate smart agriculture innovations through piloting. For the first component, um, there is one um, tremendous and very critical outcomes that will be generated through the ACRA projects and it's about co-creation of an integrated digital climate agro-advisory hub, uh, which will bring together uh, the different stakeholders uh, that will benefit the knowledge generated uh, during the past work of CGR, CCAFs and partners. And uh, through that herb, the different participating stakeholders will agree to share the data that they, they have. And also there will be opportunity to have access to climate informed uh, services. So this is an important thing that we are laying the foundation to make it happen. And uh, like I said, uh, we are working to strengthen digital climate agro-advisory services for improved crop yield forecasting and crop pests and disease 
early warning systems. You have heard from our director of West Africa that uh, this early warning and rapid response system will occupy uh, an important uh, position within the Acre Ghana project through a One Health approach. You have heard from IUMI, uh, which is uh, a sister center uh, within the CGR that we brought on board uh, to really uh, make use of the several uh, useful tools that they have been developing in terms of apps for scaling water solutions to small scale farmers in Ghana. Partnership is very important as well. And uh, like uh, Robert said, uh, we are really building on the existing to revive CCAF science policy dialogues and the engaging relevant existing innovation platforms to be able really to, stay, to take to scale um, the suitable climate smart agriculture options that uh, we will identify with different stakeholders partnerships uh, should be very uh, important really to do that. And uh, like you heard, the One Health uh, system thinking approach is what we are using to really make sure that whatever technologies or practices that we are taking to scale meet um, the optimal health outcomes which recognize the interconnection between the different words, between crop, animal, water, and uh, human and environmental health. So we are going to establish One Health Task Force, uh, working closely with partners on the ground and making sure that we co-develop something fully operational, which will create a venue to really uh, take scale uh, One Health innovations. Ganamet is an important partner, like you heard, and um, uh, we are going to strengthen the capacity of this uh, partner while uh, bringing on board uh, the University of Columbia to um, provide the capacitation uh, the capacity development needed for Ghana Met uh, to really come up with uh, real time weather monitoring and forecasting capabilities. And then the national framework for climate services already exists in Ghana. So ACRA Gada will uh, really revitalize the framework and ensure that the different uh, stakeholders engage in the national framework for climate services, they talk to each other and uh, uh, work hand in hand to provide the required and the useful climate informed services to the project beneficiaries. We are fostering public private partnerships to provide customized climate service delivery models while engaging existing climate smart villages and capacitation will uh, re be really important to independent packaging and implementation of climate smart agriculture. For the last but not least uh, component of the project, uh, like I said, we are bringing on One Health instruments and climate and gender lenses uh, to really assess uh, the climate smart agriculture and climate informed services bundles um, that uh, will go into a prioritization process and increase awareness of best bet uh, CSA and CIS bundles along the priority value chains of the project. So, um, we are, not, we are not going to reinvent the wheel. That's why we want to leverage the implementation of Ghana Climate Smart Agriculture 
investment plan. So like I said, um, the One Health approach is a system thinking uh, integrated approach. And we are using those elements to make sure that uh, in the current context of COVID-19, uh, we are working in synergy to ensure uh, optimal health outcomes for human and ecosystem uh, health. And we will also want this um, uh, One Health uh, strategy to comply with the social and environmental safeguard requirements of the World Bank. So Ekregana uh, has a theory of change, which is uh, One Health led. I don't want to go into details, but we are uh, with stakeholders, we have a shared vision of uh, reaching millions of Ghanaian agricultural producers and value chain enterprises, enterprises uh, to improve their access to climate informed services and ensure that farmers uh, are having um, the good tools and technologies to manage bio risk using new climate smart one health technologies supported by early warning and rapid sy systems. This is uh, the climate smart agriculture investment plan document. Uh, like I said, uh, there is all already a tremendous uh, outcome generated through the past work of CCAFs and partners and thanks to the funds provided by the International Development Association of the World Bank. So we don't want to reproduce the already existing um, uh, stuff, but uh, what we want to do, we want to build on the existing to really come up with new technologies or new practices that can add value to what have been already achieved through the past work of CCAPS. And here I'm showing uh, examples of what we are doing within ICRA to come up with uh, a list of the most suitable and impactful technologies or climate smart agricultural pr practices that can really contribute building the resilience of farming communities. This is my take home message and probably one of the last slides that I have for you, uh, farmers, including women and youth, are uh, the most important uh, people within Acre Ghana. Partnerships is very important together with the different stakeholders. Like you heard from Robert Zukmore. Yes, we want this to be a bottom-up approach where whatever technologies that we promote really uh, truly meet the demands of the farmers on the ground. Capacitation is very important for our partners and also for um, CCAF's uh, um, environment. And uh, with the project, we launch uh, major and mass campaigns and identify, like I said in the beginning, business models that uh, will promote uh, some of the impactful and most strategic technologies and climate smart agriculture and climate informed services bundles that will put together through the ACRA project. I would like to recognize the invaluable contributions from the various partners involved in the Acre Ghana project. Um, first of all, uh, CCAF's uh, people, and also the national partners that are very important for imp the implementation of this project. I want to name um, the CSIR Crop Research Institute, the private sector represented by ESOCO, the Ghana Meteorological Agency, 
PPRSD MOFA, and uh, the University of Development Studies in Tamale, and also uh, the CGR partners engaged in this uh, story include IUMI International Water Man Management Institute, the Alliance Biodiversity Set, and the C4 ECRAF. We have also important partner on the ground, which is uh, CABI. I want to really appreciate the support of all those partners. And we also have on board the Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy Research, which is supporting in the One Health uh, elements. So this project is uh, um, led by the Bioris Management Facility hosted by ITA Benin. And uh, I'm happy uh, to learn that in the hall, uh, some of the BMAP partners are present and uh, um, the Master of Ceremony acknowledge the participation of the WAVE Executive Director, Prof. Just, Justin Peter. Thank you for joining. And also the World Vegetable Center Director for Western Central Africa, Dr. Victor Afari Sefa. Thank you very much for your support. And uh, this cannot happen without all efforts put together by uh, the ITA Ghana team. I want to appreciate all efforts that you deployed and say very hi, hi, hi. And thank you very much for all your support. I'm really excited and uh, uh, I, I want to appreciate your commitments. And uh, finally, but not uh, the last but not the least, the International Development Association is making all this happen through the financial support. Thank you very much for the World Bank representative, Lorenzo Carrera. Thank you for the funds provided. And uh, um, I hope this was uh, an informative presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Gislin. It's indeed been a wonderful presentation. We acknowledge your presence and we're grateful you found time to join us. Just a moment. Could you help? Thanks once again to Dr. Gislin for that wonderful presentation. Dr. Gislin virtually introduced a special guest I needed to bring you to your attention. So I have the honor to acknowledge the presence of the Director for West and Central Africa of the World Vegetable Center, Dr. Victor Afari Sefa. Doc, could you give us a wave? Thank you so much. There you are. Thank you for joining us today. Your presence here is most appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, we will soon come to the climax of today's events where we will be addressed by our special guest, Professor Ajiman. Before then, please do not forget that there will be a group photo. We want your beautiful faces captured. So kindly indulge and wait a little longer once the launch is done so we can have a brief photo with everyone who made it here. I had to dance behind stage because I have to introduce a woman for the first time on stage. The gender issues are in our DNA. We can't do without it. So I am excited to introduce to you for a presentation, Dr. Francesca Marte of the Ghana Meteorological Service. A round of applause, please. And if I may, please double the 
the round of applause for a lady. Please, let's do it better. Usually women need more motivation. So please, let's hear it for her. Thank you. We love it. Please, thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doug. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Good afternoon. Um, so mine is to present the partners, the participation organizations, their participation to the um, ICRA project. So the ICRA project is anchored on GIA's multi-stakeholder platform of the bio-risk management facility hosted by IITA's station in Benin, West Africa, and includes the following partners, the CCAS, the IWMI, the CIATS, C for ECRAF. And then for us here, um, the UDS, GMET, ISOCO, um, PPRSD, and C, CABI, and Crops Research Institute. So, what we also bring on board is for CABI, Center for Agriculture by Sciences International, they are saying that it will present opportunity to interact and fashion out climate smart interventions with national and international partners, building the framework for future collaboration be beyond ICRA. CABI will gain in the knowledge co-generation and sharing processes and grant opportunity for some staff to further their studies in the climate smart agriculture field. CABI could also share tools on sustainable pest management that can contribute to enhancing the One Health approach in Ghana. For CABI, the climate informed services, relevance to build early warning systems and therefore enhancing the resilience of Ghanaian farmers to climate shocks. What they can do is they can help develop, they can help develop and deploy predictive models on pest population dynamics that can help manage their occurrences and persistence on crops and animals. Prediction of if Prediction of long dry spells and excessive prestation can also inform manipulation of dates of planting and or harvesting. When to apply some agrochemicals, fertilizer and pesticides, planning of logistics in sending inputs to production areas or cutting of harvest from these areas. And they were also interested in siting of irrigation facilities or design of watershed management techniques. For University of Develop Development Studies, they are saying the importance of ICRA for UDS in terms of capacity development opportunities, an important opportunity to enhance teaching, learning and research through mainstreaming the One Health opportunity into the curricula, and then produce postgraduate students who provide solutions to the numerous problems confronting smallholder farmers. And for them, what they can do to help with the climate shocks for farmers is to have climate services involved in the production, transfer, translation, use of climate knowledge and information in climate informed decision making and climate smart policy and planning. Then UD is also saying that climate information service delivers and communicates climate sciences on agriculture. So what they can do is that give those services, water and health and other sectors to develop and evaluate 
adaptation strategies. Then effective climate services require established technical capacities and active communication and exchange between information producers, translators, and end users. Their contribution to ICRA Ghana is that they want to directly link student data contribution and collection tools to the hub for real-time updates of the hub. Students and lecturers to assess secondary data from the hub for research and teaching purposes. Isoko. Isoko says that the importance of the ICRA to the organization, the GMET was able to carry out capacity building to equip their team of experts at the call center to better understand the seasonal forecast to develop relevant agronomic advice to beneficiary farmers. The experts are able to understand the geographical seasonal forecast, which has also helped to generate specific advice to farmers in these locations that are adoptable and implementable by the farmers. In this regard, farmers are well served and their confidence level in Zoko services is boosted. The ICRA is helping Zoko to enrich its content database with highly relevant and actionable climate smart agriculture technologies and other agricultural content. This will help consolidate Isoko's position as industry leader in digital advisory services for smallholder services for across Africa. Again, availability of various forms of content, especially relating to droughts, flood, and other climate related hazards, will enable Isoko to better serve its user base of smallholder farmers in early warning information systems. Farmers will therefore become more resilient and adapt better to increasing climate variability. The SOCO says that its contribution to ICRA is to, is to give technical knowledge in platform architecture and design, including specifying the wireframes, design features, and various require technical considerations. Provision of high level technical skills to design, develop and launch the data hub under agreed cost considerations. Provision of technical skills to co-host and maintain the data hub during the post launch phase and ensure technical integrations with other platforms and the agreed cost considerations. Support the marketing and promotion of the ARC Data Hub among the targeted populations. Support the development and implementation of a business model to ensure sustainability of the Data Hub. PPRS Demofa. The importance of ICRA to PPRSD. They are saying that up to 40% of the world's food supply is already being lost to pests and as climate environment continue to change and further intensify or create new pest threats. Farmers across the globe need to start adapting their farm and landscape management practices immediately. To them, there is a need for the implementation of climate-backed pest management, including farmers, extension workers, research and other public as well as private sector actors to manage changing pest threats more effectively in order to achieve more resilient food production systems. The ICRA project is the importance, the ICRA project is of importance to PPRSD in particular because the skills and knowledge gained will come in handy in the selection and adoption of climate smart agriculture practices for ICRA mandates commodities and the monitoring of pests and sending of pest alerts as an early warning system for farmers who cultivate those commodities. The pest data 
that is collected, generated from the pest surveillance will be part of the data in the ARC data hub. So the farmers and stakeholders can assess them in need of informed pest management decisions on their farms. Analysis of pest monitoring data will also enable the population fluctuations of key pests of mandate commodities to be determined, which is expected to contribute to they are being managed more effectively. CSIR Crop Research Institute. They are saying that access to climate advisory services and build capacity of farmers will enhance their resilience to climate data related impact and effects. The aircraft project is expected to make significant contribution to the livelihood of Ghanaian farmer and other value chain actors as the project aim as improving access to climate information services. Access to climate information services will improve the adaptation capacity of farmers to the negative impact of climate variabilities and change. Their contribution to ICRA will be providing information, including real-time data, capacity building on data, extrapolation, and application. Ghana Meteorological Agency. Ghana Meteorological Agency is the only institution mandated to give weather and weather-related issues on the public. ICRA is here helping GMET to operationalize climate smart advisories. In so doing, GMET is getting the opportunity to develop capacities in the training of her staff in climate forecast systems, sub-seasonal to seasonal, targeted climate information for impactful decision-making and the use of climate data too with time series of gridded daily and 10-day rainfall and temperature data at five kilometers or spatial resolutions. For climate shocks, it's saying that it's well, the main thing GMET wants to do is to operationalize national framework for climate changes. And in so doing, it has to meet, meet the demand for tailored climate service provision in the priority climate sensitive sectors in the country, agriculture and food security, health disaster, risk management, energy infrastructure, transport tourism, but in this regard, agriculture. Improve the widespread communication of climate services, diversify communication channels through utilization of innovative and suitable channels for broadcasting aside the television and radio. Modernize and increase the density of the National Meteorological Observing Network to improve the capacity to meet growing end user needs. Improve collaborative climate research towards climate research outputs that are more salient and end user driven. Develop and strengthen the capacity of end users to further assess and effectively apply climate services and sustain the newly defined framework for climate services at the national level. GMAT contribution to the ICRA Ghana project. It has been said that GMAT Ghana Meteorological Agency in collaboration with ISOCO would be pleased to host the ARC Data Hub. GMAT will host it on its premises and ISOCO would maintain it at a reasonable cost. GMAT finally says that it is a pleasure to give the training on the participatory integrated climate services for agriculture to its partners. Finally, on behalf of ICRA Ghana partners, I wish to thank the World Bank for releasing funds for the ICRA Ghana project. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Francis Kamati of the G Mets for such an insightful speech. Distinguished guests, we are just a speech away from the climax of today's events where our guest of honor will address us and launch the section for this afternoon. I'd like to call on the leader for risk management and sustainable development of the World Bank, Dr. Lorenzo Carrari. A round of applause, please. Thank you very much, Doug. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my name is Lorenzo Carrera, slightly different. <laughs> um, I think I have a, a presentation, um, if you can put it up. So let's, while we wait for the presentation, let me start by saying that um, uh, my work at the World Bank is, is to coordinate uh, sectors on sustainable development, um, including agriculture. Uh, but uh, um, so for me today, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, the ECRA project and all partners for inviting me. Um, I, I was not fully aware of, of the scope and the big partnership that are in place. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for me also to learn about uh, the advancement of the project, the partnership that have been put in place and the detailed uh, scope. So thank you very much to all organizers and partners. Um, okay, so um, I have a very brief presentation. Um, just to give a bit of the history and the importance of, uh, of this project for the World Bank. Um, so uh, agriculture remains central to the livelihood of many Africans, um, but yet far too many agriculture dependent Africans are uh, uh, food insecure or uh, malnourished. So after a period of, of improvement uh, in food security, um, food insecurity throughout the region has recently deteriorated. And, uh, and uh, this is, has been affected also by uh, COVID-19. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So um, as you can see on the, on the figure on the, on the top left, uh, um, the estimated total factor productivity uh, loss uh, due to climate change, it is, pat is particularly significant in, uh, uh, in the West Africa region, and is the area in, uh, in dark red. Uh, the, the frequency of severe droughts and floods have, uh, have increased, and uh, uh, from uh, uh, a, a frequency of 12.5 uh, uh, years, um, until in the period 82 to uh, 2006, we move now to a frequency of having such events every 2.5 years. Uh, so climate change is really affecting uh, um, the, the extreme events uh, that can uh, further exacerbate food insecurity. Uh, plus, uh, we, have, uh, we have pests and diseases uh, coming up more frequently. And, uh, and uh, we all know about uh, zoonic diseases. Uh, the last on the list uh, uh, of these diseases is the COVID-19. So next slide, please. So the World Bank Group uh, is stepping up its support to, to countries and the private sector to tackle uh, climate change through climate actions. Uh, as countries recover uh, from uh, the COVID-19 pandemics, pandemic, there is an urgent need to transition to a low carbon and resilient future. Uh, the World Bank has, has uh, recently prepared a, a climate change action plan, which will be developed over the next, the next uh, four years, including in Ghana. Uh, next slide. So, how do we tackle uh, climate change on agriculture, food, water, and land uh, transition? Is, uh, is, it will be fundamental uh, towards uh, uh, global food security. So uh, 
we have several areas. Um, first of all is climate smart agriculture, uh, tackling food losses and waste, the balloon econo blue economy, which is also particularly relevant for Ghana, uh, developing carbon sinks, uh, integrated water resources management and using nature-based solution. Uh, next slide, please. So the story of uh, World Bank and uh, uh, CGR, uh, it's, it's a long story of, of collaboration uh, that comes from uh, five decades. Um, it started in uh, 1971 when, when uh, World Bank President McNamara and uh, uh, Norman Borlow, the father of the Green Revolution, share a vision of using uh, agricultural science and technology to defeat poverty and uh, uh, food insecurity. Uh, so at, at that time, the creation of the CGR um, was, uh, uh, was started by the Rockefeller Foundation, the World Bank, and the UN as the only global agricultural research body dedicated to provide a solution for the poor smallholder farmers in uh, developing countries. So this is a a long-standing uh, uh, partnership and uh, the World Bank has been contributing to the CGR for uh, 50 years at a rate of around 30 million a year and uh, there is a commitment uh, for the from the World Bank president David Malpass that you see in the picture ah yes thank you um, for additional 60 million uh, to the CGR over the next three years and uh, this is how it came, uh, this uh, uh, new project, ACRA, um, which was approved by the World Bank Board in uh, uh, December 2020. So uh, the project, you have listened more in detail what the project does, but uh, to give you a, a broader picture, uh, it is active in, uh, um, in several countries covering West Africa and the Sahelian dry, Sahelian drylands, Eastern African, and uh, uh, from dry lowlands to highlands and Southern African drylands. Um, the ACRA project will be active in Mali, Senegal, Kenya, Ethiopia, Zambia, and uh, finally Ghana with uh, positive spillover effects in the region, in the surrounding region. So the, the, the ACRA project is a response also to the uh, Malabo Declaration and the Africa Food Security Leadership Dialogue uh, to provide science and technology to improve uh, um, uh, sustainable agriculture and uh, climate smart. Um, so regarding uh, agricultural research in Ghana, uh, I think it was mentioned before, um, the World Bank has, has contributed to the development of a climate smart agricultural investment plan, uh, which aim to enhance yields for around 1.7 million beneficiaries uh, through uh, nine investments and actions that you can see here. I'm, I'm not going through that, them, but uh, uh, the, the, the idea of this slide is, is to say that the ACRA project is well positioned to support Ghana to achieve uh, um, the Climate Smart Agriculture Investment Plan. So the role of CGR and ACRA is, uh, is uh, um, to, to, to create this missing middle uh, between uh, the upstream research partners and the downstream development and delivery partners in order to be effective in delivering solution for uh, um, food security. And I think my presentation is finished here. And uh, thank you very much again for the invitation. Thank you very much, Dr. Lorenzo Carrara of the World Bank. I was whispering to some, someone that even if Doug needed another hour, would have granted him because he holds the key to the entire project. He gives the money. So Doug, thank you so much for, for coming. Distinguished guests, without much ado, 
we would like to call on our guests of honor, our special guest of honor, Professor Victor Kwame Ajiman, who has, thank you, who has a, a fine blend of science and law. Doc, when I take a look at your profile, it's like I haven't been to school at all. So thank you so much. Um, your audience, please. Thank you, Madam. Uh, speaking after such brilliant presentations, I, I think we need to wave and hello. Thank you very much for the uh, presentations that we've had. Nana, I acknowledge your presence. And then the VIPs, let me please call you VIPs. Um, thank you for coming all protocol observed. And for the media, I also acknowledge your presence. I have three directors from CSIR, so I also need to recognize them, my colleagues. Um, I have here Prof. Mochia, uh, then Prof. Toto, and Dr. Saka was also around somewhere. It's, it's indeed a, a privilege to be here. But when I had the invitation, I was excited because of two things. And uh, you'd be surprised how old age and excitement can combine to somehow make you misread words. When I saw the, all right, immediately I saw the invitation letter. I said, these guys or these persons are smart. They are going to launch this program in Accra and they have the acronym of the project as Accra. You know, and I, I read it several times and I still in my mind, it was Accra. But can you imagine to my chagrin when I realized that it was not Accra, but I cra. But then I said, it's all the same. So proponents, you are smart for having the acronym and for coming to Accra to launch it. Thank you very much. I'll tell you the second, my excitement, the second uh, once I get there. But it is indeed an honor and a privilege to be invited to be the special guest of honor to this very important event, which seeks to launch the accelerating impact of CGI climate research for Africa, the Ghana cluster program today. Ladies and gentlemen, the, His Excellency, the President of Ghana, who is a co-chair of the SDGs, SDG advocates had this to say. He said that climate change is and remains the biggest threat to the realization of the United Nations SDGs, especially in Africa. And of course, he said this before the COVID, but it is still relevant, uh, I guess. And it's also important that President Macron, Emmanuel Macron of France, also said that by polluting the oceans, not mitigating CO2 emissions and destroying our biodiversity, we are killing our planet. But let's face it, there is no planet B. And by extension, he's saying that there is no, you know, option but to address issues of climate change. And therefore, when I saw this, that is not my second, but I was still excited about the fact that this program seeks to accelerate uh, the impact of climate change research in Africa. It's important for me to note that this program aims at 
taking to scale the most strategic impacts of the CCAF's African programs and promoting resilience to climate change and improve food security in Ghana. And that is the second reason why I was excited. I lead an organization, I'll talk about that, which comprises 13 institutes. And there are a number of the institutes that are doing climate change research. The difficulty has always been you know, to create synergy among the institutions, to build partnerships, even within the same organizations, and to ensure that you take the results to scale. So I was excited that things that I had been grappling with, some intelligent group of people have come together and have been able to convince the World Bank to actually sponsor that. So I believe I was excited because this is a very important uh, event that seeks to address a need. And I was also important because it addressed, there were three components. The first one is knowledge generation. Not only is it to look at the knowledge and to generate knowledge, but also to build partnerships. And not only the partnership, if you look at the third one, you need to actually take this knowledge, create technologies, build innovations that will work. And that is what made me excited because this project is relevant. And anyway, the media, when you put a mic in, in, in the hands of a lawyer, you is unpredictable. That's why, forgive me when I move outside the scope of, of this, but it is indeed a privilege to, to have that. Distinguished participants, let me come back to the issue in Ghana. Within the past 40 years, studies have shown that temperature has increased by one degree, Celsius across the country. And if you look at the wetter parts of Ghana, uh, rainfall has decreased by almost 25%. There is a 30% decrease in runoff. There are effects on health. There are socioeconomic effects. So it is relevant. Climate change is real. And it is the way in which we address it that is important. We've had effects on socioeconomic development of the country, food security, effects on our water resources, health, livelihoods, and a lot of things. It is important that we minimize the effects of climate change. And that is what uh, His Excellency, the President of Ghana, was referring to in the earlier statement that I read. Now, this time, that is why CSIR, my institution, is mandated to, contact, to conduct research and also to also look at climate change. CSIR is the foremost research institute in Ghana. Uh, I have 13 institutes, of which six are agriculture related, three are in processing and manufacturing, including food research, uh, building and road research, industrial research, two are in natural resources, water and forestry, and two are in knowledge systems, research, policy and communication and information research. We have focused primarily on a number of climate change research. For mitigation, we have looked at reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation called RED plus. And other interventions such as agricultural biotechnology to produce crop varieties. We've also worked on adaptation research, crops research, savanna agric research, have looked at agroforestry practices, crop diversification, 
developing plant resistant varieties. We've also looked at resilience research. However, there are a number of challenges that still that we are still grappling with. One, private sector invest, uh, involvement in climate change research. Population growth and its attendant challenges. Policy, decision makers trying to get them along. That is a challenge. And I believe that these are the reasons why we are also here. We need to synthesize the results. We need to get all our partners together and move together in a concerted way. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Professor, we had Professor Zungo, Zungmo. Zung Mori. Yes, thank you very much, Professor Zung Mori. He elaborated on the activities of CCAPS. Ghana is proud to have participated in CCAPS uh, program. And uh, CSR has been involved in the platform. And we believe that that has been an effective mechanism for disseminating information on climate smart agriculture to enhance livelihoods, increase agricultural production, and ensure that there's sustainable socioeconomic development. Ladies and gentlemen, in my view, this pro program would make a lot of change. It is transformative and we need to all embrace it and ensure that it is successful. It should be applauded and supported by all of us and all the African countries. In conclusion, it is not the way I have spoken that will ensure success. Success depends on you. It depends on those of us here. It depends on how we implement the program. And therefore, my message before I, I actually launch the program is that we need to go all out from here, determined to ensure the success of the ICRA program. Having said that, on this note, it will be good for all of us to stand up. Please, so let's stand up. This is not a, you know, I don't, I don't have a glass. Of, we are going to launch the program. But anyway, you have a pen, you have something, just raise it and say that, yeah, you have everything. This is unconventional. I hereby, together with you, launch the ICRA program today. Thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Please, let's hear it again for our special guest. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. Thank you very much, Professor Victor Kwame Ajiman, DG, CSIR here in Ghana. We, are, we, we truly, truly appreciate your, your presence and your creativity here. We are most grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, so the Accelerated Impact Climate Research for Africa, ICRA, duly launched this year. Another round of applause as we prepare for photography. Thank you. Thank you. 
the cameraman would help us with a group photo. I'm sure Mustafa and his team will direct us. Before then, we'd like to say a very big thank you to a few personalities and um, partners who have been with us all through. We'd like to say a big thank you to Dr. Osman Damba of the University of Development Studies. A round of applause, please. Up next, Dr. Daniel Lasari of ESCO. Thank you. Isoko. Thank you very much, Doc. Dr. Francis Kamate, my good friend. Thank you so much, Doc, for coming of GMET. Dr. Christopher Gaitu of PPRSD. Thank you so much for your support. Dr. Stephen Yabwa of CSIRCRI. Thank you very much, Doc. Last but not least, Dr. Victor Clote of Kabai. I hope I got that right. Kabi, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Victor Clote, also for your support and being a lead focal person for this program. At this point, I'd like to call on Mustafa and his team, if you're ready for the coordination of a beautiful photo. Could you direct us as to where to make ourselves comfortable for photography? So that we'll have the backdrop um, showing. So please, um, the very tallest people, the uh, invited guests can stand. I mean, no, I mean, you can stand. We will stand in front of this, if this is okay. Please. Yeah. Manuel? Yes, no, no, I want the tallest people to sit, uh, to stand here, and some might sit in front. Please, you can join us here. Yeah, the photographer. Nana will sit, right? Nana, I'm back out to Nasi. Yeah, you're better now. Uh -huh. The very tall people can stand here. Please, the very tall people, I can see. Yeah. yeah. Those are the, the tall ones. It's a bit difficult because we are many. That would be. I think they can still. Come again. Yes. Okay. So uh, we are going to reorganize. We'll get the dignitaries to rather sit in front, and the very tall people can can come, please. The dignitaries will sit in front. Please. We, we need seven chairs. The dignitaries with Nana. Seven chairs in front. Please, some of you can climb on the stage. Seven chairs. Yes. Prof. Uh, Prof. Sit with Nana. Yes, in the middle. Yes. So more. Yes. Who is missing? Prof. Dr. Sari is here. Prof. Abagade, please. Sit down. Okay. All right. Please, before the photograph, um, please forgive us. We want to acknowledge the presence of the the country coordinator of GCAP. Please, if you are here, please uh, give us a wave. Okay. Thank you so much for making it here. All right. I'm the only person missing. Okay, so we are going to have the photograph in two sessions. One will be with the max on, that will be the first one. Then after that, we'll take the max off and then take a quick one and wait again. Thank you. Um, so photographers, let me join.
Thank you so much. Please remain seated as we give you more information for lunch. Remain seated, please.
Lunch might not take one hour, we take 40 minutes. And then yeah, we you think we can start at two prompt? I believe so. It's one. Five, yeah. I believe so. So in it's the next okay. 20 minutes, if we leave here, I'm sure yeah. we can come back. Well, my you. lunch is very simple. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, we can we can do that. And just for the technical work, yeah, some I people might not want to train. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, sure. I mean, so. So where is the lunches? The same restaurant down there, uh, the landmark building. Oh, no, I'm in the other building. Yes. Know? Yeah, so that's where we are having the lunch. Oh, the in, lunch. The, in, in the Onomo restaurant? Yes, that restaurant. Okay, okay, okay. Should we take our everything, laptop bags with us? And I'll check with that to see if somebody will stay behind. Yeah. Take care of it. Just, yeah. that's the only question. Precaution. So it should be locked, ah. so we can leave it.
gender ministry woman. She is living as the last she is sorted out. Thank you. 